going to tell you about the life and death of Rusty Marvin. Rusty was my son. He began using marijuana over here at age 13. 13 years old, junior high, he started using marijuana, just like his dad. Rusty's junior year, A's, B's, C's, and D's. Obviously, he got a straight-A student, got a scholarship to go to this great school, C's and D's. Rusty started hanging around his old friends the second semester. And I'm not blaming his friends for anything, but I want to leave you guys with, with something to think about tonight. Go home and think about your five closest friends. What are they doing? Are they selling oxy? Are they doing oxy? Are they smoking dope? Are they selling dope? Are they stealing? What are they doing? What are your friends doing? Because if your friends are doing that, then that's who you are. Look at your life. There's no way you can reach your full potential again if you have your five closest friends doing illegal things. Because you will get caught up in that. You will get caught up in that. And, and Rusty started hanging around these guys. They were good kids. They were from great families. But they were doing the wrong things. Rusty started using cocaine his senior year. I did not know that. Cocaine was my thing. I've been preaching to Rusty his whole life. You do not do cocaine. It will kill you. Rusty came to see me in rehabs. He came to see me when I was in prison. And every time he said, you know why I'm here? I'm here because of drugs. Rusty overdosed on cocaine April 15th of 2005. His friends driving around with him, they did some coke. Rusty passed out at the wheel. He pulls, crashes his car into his front yard and his friends split. And he turned, he stopped breathing, turned blue. They had to call the paramedics. They came in, they took him to St. Anne's Hospital here in Toledo, ICU, called me and my wife. We went in there and he was a mess. He had needles in both arms. He had tubes down his throat. He was awake. He was crying, he was miserable. Our whole family was crying. And uh, after that, Rusty decided, you know what? I'm done this time. I wanna reach my full potential. I, I wanna live, I wanna get my life together. He asked us for, to find him some help. He goes, mom, dad, I wanna go somewhere. I wanna get my life together. We, we found a place here in Toledo and it saved his life. It truly did. He went into a 90 day facility, July 7th, 2005. I go in my garage and Rusty's laying on a garage floor. No shirt, barefoot, and he was turned. He had his sweats on. I'm kicking him I'm like, Ross, get up, man. Come on, get up. And I'm kicking him. And uh, he wasn't moving. I reached down, I grabbed his hand. No pulse, ice cold. I run into the house. I'm like screaming at my wife to call 911. And then I go back out and I start doing CPR on Rusty. The detectives get there, cops get there. Everybody descends on us and they look at him and they said, Mr. Marvin, your son's dead. You need, you need to get off him. And I was like, I wouldn't get off him. I didn't want to lose my son. I kept doing CPR and they literally had to push me off of my son. And I knew right then, I looked at my family and said, cocaine just killed our son. Cocaine just killed our son. The cycle has to stop somewhere. That's really all I got to say about it, man. You guys have been good. And if you want to talk to us, we'll be around here. And uh, I'm telling you, I'm in recovery right now. And I love it, man. I wish my son was here with me, but everything happened for a reason. And that's why we're here. Thank you.